In this lesson, we're going to work with JavaScript functions to create an interactive slideshow portfolio type thing. Let's take a quick look at it running so that you can see what it's supposed to do. So I have created this, what's supposed to be a portfolio, though I don't have any portfolio work in here, I just have images. What I've done, and I do know there's a bug in here, not with the code, I've got a thumbnail, this one's wrong. I should have had this thumbnail that I've got one misnamed. So that one's a surprise. So in any case, what ha I've got happening here is I have three arrays. I have an array for titles, I have an array for images, and I have an array for descriptions. And when you click on the thumbnails, it will call the function and it will pass a picture number which will change all three. The title, the picture, and the description. So let's take a look at how it works. There are three parts to this. We have the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. The CSS is just very, very basic formatting things. I've set up a div for my thumbnails. I've set up padding for my thumbnails. I've set up basic content. Nothing really exciting here. Nothing that's really impacting our programming code. It would probably work just fine without styles. It just makes everything line up nicely. Let's look at the HTML code. In the HTML code, we have set up a div with a bunch of thumbnails. I've got two per line broken into paragraphs and I've got the image source and the important part here is where we are calling our JavaScript. I'm calling a function and the function is named change it and I'm passing it a number. Now remember when we're working with arrays you start counting with zero. So we have eight array items numbered zero through seven and depending on which thumbnail you click on, you will get that change. So I'm actually calling my function in the JavaScript from my HTML. And we haven't done that before. So let's take a quick look at the JavaScript. We're using our standard get element by ID. And then we have three arrays. This is actually really, really simple code. I have an array of images where it just has the address of the image. I have an array of titles and when I did this I looked at it in split view so that I could just type a description as I looked at each one so I knew this was image one, this was image two. So it made it very easy for me to type in the titles and the descriptions. And so each description is just in quotes separated by commas. And again I had this in split view so it was easy to look at and type. The whole function is extremely simple. I have the function change it of the function type receiving selection. This is a parameter. As you saw I was passing 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 through 7 which corresponds with the numbers in the, the arrays. We've worked with arrays in the past on our hangman game. This is a concept here that I use frequently, referred to as parallel arrays. And what I mean by that is they arrays each element, or element zero in each array refers to similar or related content. Element zero has a large image, a title, and a description that are all related to the same image. Element one all related to the same image. Element 2, all related to the same image. So the information in the arrays is parallel. It makes it very easy to work with these images because when I pass in my parameter, which turns into a variable inside of my program, I can use that parameter that was passed in here directly to select the index from my arrays. So when I call the change it function, I'm using the get element by ID and I'm changing based on the array index that was passed. 
0 through 7. So this is a simple JavaScript program that creates a pretty neat effect that will allow you to, and this I think works better testing it live, let's go into live view, but you can test it here and you'll see that all of the three parallel arrays change together. There's my photo that the thumbnail was wrong on and everything works perfectly. Nice technique used frequently, very easy way to put in a simple function where you can pass a parameter to call it control an array.